Hey everybody, so last week I sold this kitchen utensil for $40 and that got me thinking, why not spend some time researching other kitchen utensils, tools, gadgets, things like that, that can be worth reselling for a profit on eBay or Etsy or other online shops. So I have, you've maybe seen my flatware videos and the, I think the flatware and the utensils kind of go hand in hand. So I'm always looking in those kind of same locations at thrift stores and estate sales and things like that. So for today's video, we're gonna talk, we're gonna stick with tools, gadgets, utensils, things that can fit inside the kitchen drawer. You know, there's so many different things in kitchenware that are definitely worth selling and reselling and flipping. Um, but we're going to try to stay a little bit focused on this. I have a feeling this is going to be kind of a long video. If I feel like it's getting too long, I may just go ahead and say, you know what? Let's talk about it more another day and make a part two. But at the very least, we're going to get an overview, okay? So the, the utensils that I do the best with, that I feel like I do the best with, are vintage. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, sometimes it's just nostalgia. People like the tools and gadgets. It's just like flatware. They want the stuff their mom had or their grandma had. The other thing is that honestly, they just don't make things like they used to. So, the, you know, obviously I didn't sell this exact, uh, what do you want to call it? Spatula or flipper utensil because I already shipped that one. <laughs> so this is, it would looked exactly like this. Um, but see, this one has some damage. It's a little bit dirty. It's got some wear. And so I had this in my own kitchen utensil drawer upstairs. And so honestly, if, if you've ever tried to bake cookies with and try to get cookies off a cookie pan with one of the modern day spatulas, it's really difficult. These just work so much better, right? They just slide right under the cookie. So people want vintage utensils. So that's kind of what I focus on. But as I was doing research for this video, there are some modern and current utensils that you might come across at yard sales or thrift stores or even estate sales that are worth keeping an eye out for as well. We're going to start kind of going general. We're going to, I have a bunch of utensils. Surprise, surprise, I am behind in listing utensils. And sometimes I just kind of gather them up. I grab them as I go. And then what I've been doing lately in my flatware shop on Etsy is making variation listings. So I might have a bunch from the same maker and look very similar. And instead of listing them one by one, I make one listing and then they can choose which ones that they want to purchase from that one listing. Um, I am getting more and more to doing those kind of variation listings and I see other sellers also doing that on Etsy as well. And so I'm thinking next time I make one, I'm gonna go ahead and record the process for making a variation listing if that's something you're interested in. And I'll just pop up a quick video on how to make a variation listing on Etsy. You can also do it on eBay and possibly I will, next time I do a variation listing over there, I'll record that one as well because they're a little bit different. The ideas are the same. I just helped my husband make his first one and I think we've got that all figured out. So we're gonna start just by talking, let's talk about some brands. Um, I was trying to figure out how to organize this and I think this is what I've come up with. We'll just talk about some brands that you definitely wanna be on the lookout for and then we'll switch over to my computer and we'll take a look at um, I just picked a few different types of utensils and, you know, not every utensil in or not every brand of that item is going to be worth selling. So I'm not saying pick up every garlic press that you ever see, but let's look at garlic presses, for example, and see which ones would be, you know, something to keep an eye out for. Okay, so I think that's how we're going to do it. So let's just talk about brands. First brand that you should know, if you don't already know, is Cutco. So Cutco does do knives, um, and they're known for knives, but they also have utensils. So a lot of the research I was doing for different tools, gadgets, um, utensils type things, the top sellers, Cutco was coming up repeatedly. 
So we'll see some examples of that later. Cutco can be quickly identified. This is the only Cutco utensil I have currently. It's listed right now, um, but it's a little whisk type thing. And it has a very distinct shaped handle. So sometimes you can pick that out pretty quickly in those big messes of utensils. Um, the bin, you know, sometimes thrift stores just dump them all into one thing. So sometimes that can be spotted. This is like their pearlized white handle, but their brown marbleized handle is usually more common that you'll find. Um, anyway, I have sold this whisk before and I think I have it, you know what, I'll pop up my comp from my last one, which was a couple years ago. I think it's around the $18 mark. So keep an eye out for Cutco. Obviously, some of their utensils are going to sell for a lot more. This isn't as super sought after as some of their other pieces. Okay, so that's Cutco. Just keep that in mind. Look for the funky handle. and You'll do great. Now, Flint Arrow Arrowhead. We say Flint Arrowhead. It doesn't say Arrowhead on it. There's actually a little picture of an Arrowhead on it, but it'll say Flint Stainless USA. So this one that I sold, this is a Flint um, piece and they just kind of call that pattern the wheat pattern. It doesn't really have an official name. Um, I don't know if I can get close enough. If you can see, it's not going to focus. Anyway, I will pop up a picture, a better picture of the Arrowhead logo. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. One of the more common designs, <laughs> more utensils, is, let me see if I can find one. Here's one. Just this plain black handled kind. So it has the arrowhead and then flint stainless vanadium USA. So along similar lines, let me see if I can find one. Who is that? Echo. Okay, so I kind of lump these together. So there's Flint Arrowhead. And like I said, sometimes they're going to have designs on them. And then a lot of times they're just going to be these plain black handled ones. But they're solid heavy duty utensils. And they're, you can see it goes all the way through. They're riveted, just nice solid pieces and utensils. Now, sometimes the there's wear to the black. Sometimes they're super shiny and sometimes there's wear. So I either try to, if I'm selling them as a set, kind of keep the wear even, not like one is super shiny and one is like beat up to death. So I'll try to keep those together. You know, sometimes you find them together and so their wear is pretty consistent. So that's nice. Um, Let's see what is this one here's another echo forge as you can see they're somewhat similar you know sometimes the rivets are in different places the handles have a little bit of a different design um so what i this is what i was talking about this will probably be one of my variation listings on etsy is i'll just kind of put all the um flint arrowhead together i'll put the echo forge together you know, in different variation listings, and then people can choose which ones they want. And I'll try to make sure that the maker's marks kind of match up. So there are pieces that are, you know, I probably won't, I'll probably just do Echo Forge and I'll just make sure to explain what the, um, what the mark on it looks like. They're all pretty similar. Um, here's another Echo piece that has a pattern on it. And a lot of times, you you know, you don't have to sell the matching sets. You don't have to split them up and sell them separately. You might get more profit that way. Well, you definitely will get more profit that way. But some pieces are a little bit harder to sell or don't sell for as much. So sometimes if I have a really nice matching pattern set, I go ahead and just sell that together as a lot. Okay, and if we're talking about... Well, actually, let's switch over and see what this is. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's just talk about this. These can also be echo pieces. This one's not marked, but they have nylon handles. So utensils with just the black nylon handles can also do pretty well. The ones I was showing you before that are the Flint Arrowhead, a lot of people list them as Bakelite, but they're just kind of more of a composite plastic material. Uh, they might have similar properties to Bakelite, but um, I've never confirmed that that's true. Um, anyway, okay, so those are just those black handled basic ones you might find. And you do wanna look for um, condition. So like I said, sometimes the black handles can be faded, whether people put them in their dishwasher or whatever. Um, but also look for melt marks or burn marks on it. Doesn't mean it's a deal breaker, but it definitely will affect value. And, um, you know, the better condition the handles are, the better your price is going to be. Okay, so switching over, those are pretty heavy duty. Um, there's some nice Echo Forge. Also did some really nice wood handled pieces. I don't have any currently. Um, but... Just kind of keep an eye out for those names because they're solid and they're the pieces that people are looking for. Now, speaking of Echo, Echo also, like later on, um, you know, those were probably 50s, 60s, 70s, and then they kind of got into plastics and brighter colors. And that doesn't mean that they're not worth anything. So Foley is probably a name you've seen. And I've got these three pieces that are all Foley and they are made out of nylon. So people like that. They like the nylon utensils, especially in the bright colors. So that's kind of what I would keep an eye out for. Like I've got this Foley. It's just kind of white or off-white. And I think with the off-white ones, you can get more staining in you know if it was used with sauces or whatever so i i was debating i don't have a ton of foley right now um but as i gather up more i might just make a listing with all the different pieces and you never know somebody might want this but it just might not be the highest priced one here's an example of i think this was echo yep an echo orange slotted spoon and what I could do is I could just put all these, you know, all the different colors. Here's another Foley that's brown and another Echo that's brown, a little ladle. So I could make a listing right now with this, but I might wait till I have a few more. Oh, another Foley, but a lighter orange, kind of strainer whisk kind of thing. Anyway, so the colors are all kind of similar and complementary, so I might. I might just go ahead and do that, or I might wait to pick up a few more. Um, out of these, we're going to talk about spatulas later, because as I said, this was $40. So there's something about spatulas, and I'm going to, spoiler alert, tell you right now, spatulas are probably the best-selling utensil that we can talk about today. So... Um, another brand that makes nylon utensils is Rubbermaid. Um, I don't know that I found it and actually we're going to look at some examples later and I think I might have, who knows, skipped over some Rubbermaid utensils, not, not knowing the potential. Okay. So that's what I'd like to say about that. We're going to talk about another brand. Let's go ahead and sk skip to that right now. It's not necessarily a brand, but kind of a group of brands. So those were Foley, Echo, their nylon. If you can find new old stock, that's always exciting. Um, people really like those utensils. Now, another popular material that utensils were made out of is melamine. So kind of a, a popular brand for that as well is Rosti, R-O-S-T-I-E, T-I, R-O-S-T-I. And they are made in Denmark. Okay, so you're gonna have Rosti. Another one to look out for is Hutzler. It says Melamine, made in Thailand. Um, what's this? Meepal, M-E-P-A-L. 
Melamine, made in Denmark by Rosti. Okay, so those are kind of connected. Um, another Rosti. Rusty made in Denmark. Okay, so you get the idea. Look how colorful these are. Here's another one. This one is actually by Dansk. It's just, I think it's half of a salad thing, but it could definitely be, just be used as a serving. Um, serving spoon. I actually do have a comp. I think I'll pop it up right here for when I sold. I either sold two spoons like this or it was a salad set, I can't remember. So I'll pop the picture up right there. And Hutzler, okay, so we've got, I've got quite a little collection. I've just picked up along the way of all these different melamine, made in Denmark, made in Germany, um, types of utensils. And I can either make up a lot to put together or I can just go ahead and make it a variation listing like I was talking about and um, see what pieces sell out of, out of it. But especially on Etsy, I've always done well with those brands. Don't ask me why this stuff isn't listed. You should know me by now. I've got backlogs of everything. Okay, so that is another brand name type thing that you want to keep a lookout for. So we've done Cutco, pretty much pick up all the utensils of Cutco if they're in good shape. Um, Flint Arrowhead, um, Echo, Forge, Echo itself, um, you know, those solid, good, solid handled ones. The Echo plastic handled ones that were, I showed you second, um, they're like black and just kind of basic. Those utensils are kind of everywhere, so I probably would... Um, sorry, super loud, like this, where they're just kind of plain black. I would kind of lot those up, I think, because they're, they're fairly common, okay? Um, and then we have the Echo colored ones and the Foley that are made out of nylon, rubber made nylon utensils, always good. And then we have these Melamine ones that are, Copco is another brand, you know, Meatball, Rosti, Together, Hutzler, Dansk. Um, we're going to keep an eye out for those as well. Again, these plastic ones can often have burn marks, melt marks, things like that. So just kind of keep an eye out. Again, not a deal breaker, but might affect value. Okay, we're going to go back to another brand. And this brand is called Ultra Temp. That one does not say it on it. Okay. Ultra Temp. You look at it. Now these are made by the Robinson Knife Company. And the, the idea behind those is that these can be used in things that or in food that goes up to 400 degrees. So you might, you probably wouldn't get as many melt marks or things like that on items like this, unless you're sticking it right on the burner. Um, and they were made to complement the Visions Wear by, is that Corning who did the Visions Wear? That amber glass, you know, amber glass uh, cookware stuff. So these are kind of in rough condition. I'm going to pop up a comp right here of the last set of um, Ultra Temp that I sold. And then they also come in different colors. So there's this color. I've sold green and then I've seen that it comes in white as well. So here's a comp for the green pieces that I sold. Okay, so Ultra Temp, that is something I sold a lot of it more in the past and then I didn't find it for a long time. I found a bunch at a yard sale last summer, I sold it and then I think my husband picked up a few more pieces at the bins and I just haven't gotten a chance to list them yet. They're a little bit rougher condition than the other ones I was selling, so I waited to sell those before I listed these. Now, just in general, another rule of thumb is utensils that are in popular vintage kitchen colors, such as pink. Okay, so this is a vintage 50s um, spatula. Spatula. Um, I did buy this like at a little antique store type thing and it does have an issue 
the stainless is split. It was almost like something, see there's a crack right here. It was kind of like something must have gotten, it must have bent too far. But it has a really cool pink handle. And so I think people are gonna overlook that because of the coolness. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be able to sell this for as great a price as I normally would. Okay, so this is Echo Forge. So another good name. And pink, turquoise, teal, those types of colors will do really well. Any flatware that matches a, or not flatware, any utensils that match a popular dinnerware set uh, or decor, kind of like there's utensils that match the Merry Mushroom Sears thing, and people love that, okay? So that is something to keep in mind. We are also going to talk about any utensils that have an atomic look to it with Starburst or things like that. That, that works in flatware, but it also works in, in this as well. So I will throw up some pictures of a couple utensils that I've had in the past that I might not even have had a brand name on it, but it had Starburst on it and it had a, you know, it just had that atomic look, right? Mo Danish is a knifeware set. Okay, here's a, here's a set of Mo Danish. Let's just talk about this for a second. This is not exactly what I'm talking about, but this is the brand, okay? They have these really awesome wooden handles, very modern, modernist looking, right? Well, they have, um, they have a set of knives, like carving forks, things like that, that have Starburst all, all over them. So I think it was the fork that I just sold recently and it had the stars, the starburst and atomic look on it. So I'll pop up a picture right here. Okay, so let's just talk in generalities again for a couple things. Um, another thing, you know, all right, so we talked about awesome colors, pink, turquoise. Um, we talked about um, atomic, so that's always good. Another utensil you want to keep an eye out for, I'll kind of put these two together. Um, it's, I'm just going to show you the top of this because this is not exactly what I was talking about, but this is called a cheese plane or a cheese slicer. Okay. And a lot of times, if you've seen my what sold videos, you can find these with a teak wooden handle. I love selling these if, you know, it's an easy 20 bucks all day long. And they're usually by a brand called Spar and they're made in Norway. This one is just a stainless Japan and it just has a really cool floral pattern. So I have this one listed right now, um, but I wanted to show you the top. So sometimes you also, so moving over, I'm gonna put a picture of the Spar teak handled ones up here right now. Um, but you can also find these with pewter handles that are also very Scandinavian. They might have pictures of Vikings or things like that on the handle in pewter. So I will pop up a picture of one of those right here. Now, speaking of those, the pewter handled utensils, the cheese, cheese slicer isn't the only utensil that they make like that. Any utensil you can find that is made by like a Scandinavian company and it's made out of pewter and it has all that design with the, the Viking boats or the Vikings or things like that, um, those will sell well also. So I've sold a few different pieces of that as well. So that's just another something to keep an eye out for. Okay. Um, let's talk measuring spoons. I don't have any to show you right now, but I can pop up a picture. Um, especially what I try to do is find copper colored aluminum or aluminum measuring spoons, especially if they have the rack that, that goes with it. Um, the complete set with the rack is obviously going to do the best. And so here's an example, or I've already showed you the example of that. I think I've sold two of those sets. Um, and then hanging racks 
are kind of an adjacent thing. Those things might not be in the drawer of the kitchen, but they might be on the wall, right? And so all your big utensils have, uh, here we go. They have the hole at the top. And a lot of those companies made a matching rack, you know, that goes with it. And so all your utensils can be hanging up. So we've sold, we've found the racks separately and have sold those. I'll pop a couple of pictures up. Um, and then if you're fortunate enough to find the whole set of utensils with the rack, I'm going to show a picture right here of one of my best new old stock finds of, um, vintage utensils and it was in its original box and I believe I sold it for $70. So just kind of keep your eye open for that type of thing. Okay, one more generic thing I want to say, and I'll have to put up a picture here, is if the utensil you're looking at is modernist looking or sleek or made in Italy or made in Germany or Switzerland or something like that, take another look at it, okay? So, yeah, it just just take a second look <laughs> is what I want to say. So here's a picture of a garlic press that we've sold, and we're gonna talk about garlic presses later. But here's an example of what I mean by modernist. So there's also like a tea strainer spoon type thing. You know, you normally see the little round bulb ones, but we have sold this style tea strainer a couple times, and it sells for more than the basic ones, right? So I would just, you know, just kinda hone your eye, look up those modernist look at where it's made. Made in the USA is fine. Made in Italy, made in Germany, things like that. Okay, so I think that's that's all the generic kind of information. I mean, I gave you specific information about brands, but let's take some time now. It's already been half an hour. I don't know. Do you want this as two videos? Okay, I will um, go ahead and stop this part of the video. We're going to go ahead and go into looking at my computer and we will look at um, some specific utensils and we'll see how long that will do that. Okay guys, so I made an executive decision and I'm going to split this up into two videos. I have a lot of really good information I want to share with you and I don't want to go ahead and make this drag out forever. But I promise part two will be coming out tomorrow. So this video does take quite a bit of editing because I have to add a lot of photos and, and things like that. So we are going to just leave it as the overview for now. That was part one. And tomorrow, part two, we will go into specifics about the types of, you know, some different kinds of utensils. And we're going to look at comps and we're going to look at like specific types of can openers or garlic presses or things like that, that we want to be on the lookout for. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. You guys let me know in the comments, what's your favorite kitchen utensil? Do you have one that's a vintage that you just love it? Um, do you buy utensils at thrift stores for yourself for personal use? Honestly, that's where most of mine in my life have come from. And then let's talk, let me know um, your best utensil sale. If you've sold utensils, what, what do you find to be like a no-brainer that has sold for you in the past? Okay, thanks so much, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow.